State of the Sun Devils with Jeremy Schnell, Jesse Morrison, and Mitch Vereldis, an Arizona sports podcast. Hello and welcome into another edition of State of the Sun Devils alongside Mitch Vereldis and Jesse Morrison. I'm Jeremy Schnell. ASU plays against Fresno State this week, but that's not actually what has been the talk going into this game. QB? The game's not been the talk what? for the week? What? What? QB controversy, guys? Oh, gosh. Maybe? Don't say Trenton Borgay. Jeremy, whatever you do, don't say Trenton Drew Borgay. Pine is back and practicing on the practice field. Yeah, I guess that's where they do practice, Jesse. Um, on the practice field, <laughs> correct. Yep. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something as about that. As opposed to like the bubble. Or, um, I mean, sometimes they practice in the bubble, but it's very rare. But yeah, this is exciting uh, that, you know, not only does ASU have a quarterback that they can trust in in, um, in Jaden Rashada, but it seems like, you know, Drew Pine is on his way back and God forbid something happens to Jaden Rashada, we have a good backup. I think that's all this is. And that's all it should be, respectfully. There is a lot of talk in camp about how Drew Pine was looking really, really good. Of course, the Notre Dame transfer. Notre Dame was a top program last year. Should we be surprised by that? No, not totally. There were nitpicks here and there about Pine and some of the aspects of his game, of course, as we know, Jesse. But up until that hamstring injury, it was almost a neck-and-neck neck race between him and Jaden Rashada. And I think that's where the controversy stems. I don't think it means anything. I think this is Rashada's job to lose, but I don't think he's losing it this week. Exactly. I think that Jaden Rashada is the starting quarterback moving forward um, if he struggles obviously then maybe drew pine can step in and be the starting quarterback you know if second half Jaden rashada is what we see over and over again he's been really good in first halves not so great in second halves um, but i think he's the starter moving forward at the moment but this is kind of what they have to um, think about and this is what wolf and luke were talking about it's kind of who you want leading your program moving forward both of these guys have eligibility left obviously with Rashada being a freshman Drew Pine's pretty early in his college career so one of them will transfer most likely if the uh, if they don't get the opportunity to be a starter this year so it's kind of who you want leading your program in 2024 and beyond if you know like who who you go with is who you want leading your program going forward and and I think that at the moment that is Rashada clearly but if if something changes if he's if he struggles if Pine looks really good in practice then maybe you move to Drew Pine but right now not not what I would do here's one thing I want to rule out based on what catch coach Kenny Dillingham said Jeremy he's not the kind of guy that likes to do the two quarterbacks in a game thing he's the kind of guy that wants to have just one guy command the offense from start to finish. And the only reason that he would remove somebody, it seems like, is, and I'm not trying to jinx anything, is because of an injury. So I think, in the end, it's going to be Rashada from start to finish. And then after that, if there is controversy, we can make controversy of it. I don't think it's this week. In terms of what, um, what Rashada brings to the table, we saw last week the deep ball, again, connection with... Elijah Badger on that long touchdown pass. I believe it was 65 yards, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. But in terms of the the um, the underneath throws, the intermediate throws, we saw some struggles again. The interception was on a slant pattern that the safety just kind of jumped. Obviously, uh, Oklahoma State played that 3-3-5 defense, so it's tough to get anything going against that defense. Uh, they had the, the big deep ball, uh, but that was about it. Um, when it comes to down the field passing. So for Rashada, what do you guys want to see from the, him this week? I want to see two consistent halves. Like I want to see a full complete game from him um, or at least some moments in the second half. He hasn't really had that yet. I want to see like him lead a long touchdown drive or have one of those deep throws that – he connects on somebody with in the second half where it it is a big momentum changer in the game. In the past couple of weeks, it just seems like he's come out a little bit flat in the second half and especially in week one. And that's just what I want to see two consistent halves from Rashada. 
and I, I think if, if he does that, then it's going to be really hard for anybody else to take over this this year, especially because they got Fresno State and they got USC. Both teams, not great defenses. So, I thought you said you liked uh, USC's defense a little bit better the other day. <laughs> it was a little bit better, but Stanford, they were playing Stanford. They were playing Stanford, count. so I I don't really put too much uh, credence into that. So I just think that I just want to see two consistent halves from Rashada. I want to see him play a full game, and then if if that doesn't happen, then you open up the the QB controversy. But I, I just. So far, you called I called it a yeah, controversy. I said if if you, I said it, it, it opens up the mm, QB controversy he, if he has a bad game, Jeremy. Here's what I think: it's does the controversy exist now? And I think the three of us agree: no, the controversy does not exist now. The fact that Pine is returning from injury is a unique wrinkle to the quarterback room, but it doesn't necessarily mean that something's going to change this week. I don't recall if Kenny has made it official that Jaden's going to start again on Saturday. But the assumption is that's going to happen. It is being reported. And to Jesse's point, if Jaden struggles again, if Jaden can't put together a solid second half like his solid first halves, then yeah, the controversy is there. Because you have a veteran guy who's played for a Power 5 program, who's played for a Top 10 team, who can do all of the things that you want from a quarterback. Do you, consi do you consider the bull ban in all this, though? Of like, how badly do you want to win a bunch of games this year if it's not going to mean anything at the end of it all? Again, like I said, it's all about who you want leading your program moving forward. If you want Drew Pine as your starting quarterback in 2024, then you go with Drew Pine. If you want Jaden Rashada as your starting quarterback in 2024, then you go with Jaden Rashada. It's it's really comes down to that because, again, the wins and losses this year don't matter as much as the improvement on the field who you want to have on your team moving forward, um, you know, showing recruits that this is a place to be. That is what matters this season, not the wins and losses necessarily. Like, you want to just see what you've got. And Jesse, let me cut you off for a second, because it's also about confidence, right? Like, it, when it comes to Rashada, like, you want to keep him confident, right? Sure, but again, if, if you want him to be your guy moving forward. Right. Like and so that goes with both of these guys, right? Like if if you're gonna if, if from what you're saying, right? If you're gonna go with Pine moving forward, when he's ready, throw him in there because you need him to be confident. Well, right? But if not you're gonna go, you know, not really because it's it's a next man up mentality in football, and Rashada's come in next man up, assuming that Drew Pine would have been the starter if he had not gotten hurt at Camp T. It you know it's a next man up. Rashad has come in. He has shown his big play capability, what he's able to do, his ability to to run a little bit. I think he has um, shown that he is the better quarterback than Drew Pine and what Drew Pine can do. And until he doesn't do that, then you stick with Jaden Rashada. I don't think it matters about it. it about confidence necessarily i think that football players are confident and believe in themselves most most of the time like i think that drew pine probably believes he's a really good player and if he does if it doesn't work out here he'll just go somewhere else now let's move on to people that did end up going somewhere else assuming the ncaa is <laughs> not getting in the way of any of those transfers right yeah yeah um, <laughs> now Deion he Sanders can sit out a year i mean it's yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. a lifetime in college football. One sure. whole year. Sure. But, you know, players have played until they're really old in college football. Or if if you count like 25 or 26 really old. Well, it's kind <laughs> it's of old, old for college. Um, yeah. It, so Deion Sanders and, and Colorado have gotten out, off to a amazing start. Uh, they almost out, for viewers wise, they almost out viewed, I think. You they almost say. had more peak viewers than the Texas Alabama game last Correct. Saturday, which everybody expects to be the biggest game of the weekend. And then here comes Dion. They get a huge win against TCU the week before, and they're playing Nebraska again on Big Noon Saturday on Fox, and they just completely ate up the entire television market that day. And, it's insane. And they dominated the game, most of it. In the second half. Yes. First yep. half was very lackluster until the last few minutes. Uh, so... Deion Sanders in Colorado off to an amazing start. 
did ASU kind of shuffle their feet on maybe not bringing Dion in to be their next head coach? I, I think time will tell because yeah, if number one, wait, first of all, let's, we both, we all three of us, we all like Kenny Dillingham. Like we we think that was the right hire. Yeah, this is this is not this a is uh, not conversation a, about. No. Oh my gosh, I'd rather have Dion than Kenny. Right. I like Kenny. I think Kenny just needs a few more goes at it. Right. I think that Dion was a is a win now. Don't care about the future kind of deal. Like Colorado, he's not going to be at Colorado more than two, three, four years max. He will be there as long as his sons are there. Yeah, but he can just – I mean, I guess his sons can – They can't transfer. They can't well, really I don't know. Again. If the NCAA gets in the way of them trying to all transfer again, then he probably can't do that. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's like I don't think that could necessarily He will happen. be there as long as his sons are there. There will be an SEC school outside of Kentucky, Vanderbilt, Alabama, Georgia, and um, maybe one other school uh, that – that is game for Dion. I think that most of the you SEC, think, Texas, you, you don't think Kentucky, not a big enough program. You Kentucky, would, Kentucky and Vanderbilt, not big enough programs. Texas, Alabama, Georgia, they kind of are set at head coach. The rest of these schools care about football. Would love Dion. Would immediately become national powers if they brought in. I Dion. saw someone saying that Dion could be the next guy at Alabama. After Saban uh, retired, Saban? maybe, wow. maybe, but that oh. would be that'd be like in six years. I don't think Saban's going to be done until he's like 70, 78, something like that. So, I doubt. They seem to be good friends on the on the commercial, the Affleck front. commercials. Okay, uh, yeah, but going back to the ASU thing, I think that Kenny is a long term play. If you had wanted immediate success, then you go with Dion. But again. The problem with that is I think that ASU kind of already did the immediate success thing. I mean, I know that it was kind of a – I don't think that was what they tried to do but with Herm. But with Herm, it kind of – there was a lot of buzz around Herm. There was a lot of hype around Herm when he came in. I know a lot of people It wasn't were, great hype, though. Yeah, it wasn't great hype. <laughs> but, like, after he got a, a couple signature wins to start off, the Michigan everybody State was, was – yeah, Everybody was on the Herm train. It was like, oh, I can't believe what Herm's done with this team, the pro model, all this stuff. And then it burned out. So that's what I'm a little bit worried about with Dion is that he's one of these guys that would not – that it would – it the, the candle would burn out quickly on that. And so, I mean, I think that it's – I don't think it's like should ASU have gone with Dion – or should ASU have gone with Kenny Dillingham? I think it's what you want for your program. And uh, clearly ASU didn't want the Dion experience. They wanted something that was going to build for the future. A younger coach. Dion's like 20 years older than Kenny Dillingham. So that's what I, I think. And so I'm going to say that TBD on if they should have gone with Dion. I coach, think Coach Prime. I'm. You know, whatever. I think still <laughs> that Prime. it's the process of not necessarily considering him. I mean, we had Dr. Michael Crow on KTAR talking with Broomhead months ago about the whole would you consider pushing for Dion? And not not to totally bash the university president, but to dismiss a guy who was getting as much buzz and was getting a lot of credibility as Dion Sanders was, to kind of dismiss him in that immediate felt like the wrong thing path to not even give him some consideration to not even offer a chance to come in interview talk about the program etc cetera, etc cetera. I think that was the wrong move I don't think it was a mistake to not hire him I just think the publicity going out there not necessarily supporting the idea of going after Dion looks pretty terrible in here's, hindsight here's what I think and I have a question for you guys like if you guys agree with me basically I think that <laughs> you bring in Dion, you bring in all his guys, everyone transfers from ASU's program for the most part. Uh, you have two to three, four years of, of insane success, maybe even a college football playoff appearance, and then he's going to leave, take all of his guys again. Do you want that? I, you know, I think it would be great to have. I, I don't 
necessarily know if he would have come here and then decided. I think Colorado and ASU are two totally different things. I think Colorado is like, uh, you know, I know Boulder's in near Denver, but it's kind of in the middle of nowhere in terms of like your house. Like <laughs> that was a low that's blow. A terrible <laughs> inside baseball joke, Jesse. Um, no, but like I think if Dion, if Coach Prime had come here. I don't think it would have been two years and he's gone. I do. I, and I, I don't think it would. I do. I, but here's here's what Jeremy, I'll say. Jeremy, I, I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you, and I'm sorry to cut you off here, but ASU is not viewed – I'm not even sure, Jeremy, that ASU is viewed as a better job than Colorado. Right, because, now, right uh, now it's not. No, even before the season because no. Colorado – even before, like, Herm was here because Colorado – People don't remember this powerhouse football program in the 90s. So I don't think that Arizona State powerhouse football program in the 70s when they were in the WAC. I guess that I'm, what I'm doing here is that I'd rather be in Phoenix than in Colorado. And I don't know if that's the same for you, Mitch, because you're kind of from there. But I'm slightly biased on that opinion, yeah. but and we can move past it if you want. Depends on the time of year, Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> here's what I'll say about it and before we move on. Around the time that all that, you know, they were doing this coaching search, I said that my number one choice would have been Coach Prime. Can oh. you say Dion? <laughs> no, he goes by Coach Prime. I don't want to disrespect him. Um, go Knowles. But you can. Um, um, oh. Anyway. Uh, Again, bias. another inside baseball joke. <laughs> um, anyway, though. No, but here's here, Jesse. Can I finish my point? Yeah, you you no, haven't let me get on on this. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. If just because he wants to go by Coach Prime doesn't mean that I have to call him Coach Prime. I can call him Dion. So uh, around around the time that I th that we you know we're going through this search and we were talking about this on the podcast, who would we want as ASU's next coach? Jesse, I believe, said that he would want Coach Prime. Jake Anderson, our former co-host, said that he wanted Coach Prime, and I said I wanted Coach Prime. So it's obvious it was now, the best hire. Yes, period. In in hindsight, in hindsight, this was the right move, though. Having Coach Kenny Dillingham here at ASU to take them through this kind of gap year, so to speak, to get no, over, it's a literal gap year. Yeah, to get. Imagine over, hiring Coach Prime and then announcing a bull band. Yeah. To for this year, get over this hurdle and to move forward with a coach that's young, intelligent, and the players seem to like, just like Dion's players seem to like him. I think that was the right move. And I don't think that, you know, they should, we should even have a second thought about maybe they should have gone after Coach Prime. I just think it's TBD. I, I think it's too early to make that conclusion. I think it's too early to say, oh, Dion was the person that they should have hired. Kenny was the person that they should have hired. I think it's, again, TBD, because we don't know how these two programs are going to go after these first two games. We're totally doing the overreaction thing. Well, guess what? What is it? Week five here in Tempe? Them two going at it? Or is it week six? Them two going at it right here in Tempe? And is it going to get magnified even more when that happens? I wonder. As of right now, that's scheduled to be on ESPNU, and you'll be able to listen to it as well on um, Air the Arizona Sports app and on 98.7, I believe. But I have a feeling that that's going to change from ESPNU to something else. I, I have, have a feeling that somebody's going to want that on a bigger channel. Um, yeah. Speaking of games, though, this weekend, ASU does take on Fresno State. That team is 2-0 and after beating Purdue and Eastern Washington barely. Yeah, one of the wins was good. Out. The other win, <laughs> not so good. I mean, the, both of them were close games. They beat Purdue 39-35, to and then they beat Eastern Washington, who is a good FCS program, I will say. Shout out Cooper Cup. They I have guess. red turf. They oh, do have red turf. Really? And, yeah. yeah. You've never oh. seen that? No. It's like one of the most iconic turfs in college More iconic sport. than Boise State? No, but it's it's up there. The, okay. the red I don't know what about, what about the Pacific Northwest. They're like, oh, let's just put, uh, let's put color on, on our field. turf. <laughs> I don't know. What, what's wrong with green? Sorry, but... Jeremy. What you got? Um, no, but so they, they were able to get two wins to start off the season. Something yeah. ASU was not able to do after they lost. This past weekend to Oklahoma State, they're one and one coming into this week. 
Um, they're tied for 81st in the nation in total defense, and they're uh, number 53 in the nation in total offense. Quarterbacking play pretty good, Jesse. I just want to get your thoughts on this Fresno State team overall, though. I watched the condensed or some of the condensed game that they played against Eastern Washington, and basically what I saw was a team that looked about as even as Eastern Washington. It was kind of a back and forth game with Eastern Washington. It wasn't, I wasn't, it, they didn't look bad. They didn't look good. They were just kind of mid. I would call it Fresno State mid. And that's not a bad thing. I just don't really know how they beat Purdue because Purdue is a decent team. So I, I think that the quarterback plays pretty good. I definitely think that Fresno State has the edge on Oklahoma State in quarterback play. Oklahoma State the had 13th. three quarterbacks, which means they didn't have one. Um, the 13 incomplete or the 16 incompletions, not great from Fresno State's quarterback, Keen. No, um, but he's he's better than the three guys yes. that Oklahoma State had. Uh, that's my that's my point. Eric Brooks had a really good game against Eastern Washington, eight catches for 95 yards and a touchdown. He was good. Yep. And then I mean, they're running back Elijah Gillum. He had 20 carries for 86 yards. Not the best yards per carry, but 4.6. That's pretty good. In college, you, you'd eh, like to see better. Okay. At 20 carries, 86 yards. You would like to see over 100 yards there. Okay. But he also he 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 got the two he got two touchdowns. So. ASU struggled a little bit in the second half to stop the run, but did pretty well in the first half. Um, I would like that. I would like for them to shut down Gillum a little bit and make Fresno State throw the ball. But it seems like they're kind of good at both. The offense is okay, man. Like Mitch, how do you? What do you think ASU has to do to stop this? I mean, offense? in general, I'm not going to diss the uh, the hometown kid, Mikey Keene from Chandler. Course, don't want to do much dissing of him, and he Gambo, played pretty. Gambo's uh, Gambo's wife went there. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. And then the fact too that he had a couple of gear, years games of experience at UCF, which was a pretty prominent program for a minute there. They had the still undefeated... is. I believe they have the number one offense in the country. Through yeah, two games, and they're going to be joining the Big Twelve next year. So soon to be ASU foe. I... Look, the fact that their offense could put up. Over 30 points in back-to-back -back weeks tells me that ASU's defense may or may not be in for a long day. And yeah. I don't think Mikey Keene should be overlooked just because he went from one lower-level school at the time to another lower-level school at the time. And also, the Mountain West is pretty tough to read right now. That conference has been owned by Boise State for the longest time. Boise State's 0-2 to start the year. So this might be the opportunity for Fresno State to pounce, and they feel very confident about their situation, and their offense has put up 30 points in back-to-back -back weeks. I don't think you can be sleeping on them. Boise State had two very tough opponents, I will say, though. But they're 0-2. <laughs> even if they, if, look, two is even if two. they <laughs> scheduled them to a position where they are playing competitive games, they got their butts handed to them by last Washington. week. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't close. Uh, yeah, Washington Boise State that was ten years ago, ago yeah. would have been a close matchup that you could have considered. You probably would have said Boise State was going to have that edge in that game. Um, the thing that I wanted to say is that Jeff Tedford, the head coach of Fresno State, mm -hmm. this is something that ASU is going to have to deal with for the second week in a row. Kenny Dillingham in his second game as as head coach of any program ever faced Mike Gundy, longtime head coach, had a ton of success in college. Here comes another experienced head coach. Here comes another experienced head coach, Jeff Tedford. He's been around. He coached that great Cal team with Aaron Rodgers. So he, he knows how to coach quarterbacks. He knows how to win games. <laughs> He's had five 10 win seasons in his college coaching career 38 and 18 in his five years at Fresno State, uh, 82 and 57 at Cal. So this, this is no slouch of a coach. So again, don't want to get out coached by Jeff Tedford. I think Kenny might have been a little bit out coached last week. This this game, though, again, another great test for Kenny to see what he can do against an experienced head coach. It's a great test. I'm excited for it. Jeremy. 
<laughs> Here's what I'll say uh, about this game, and I, I, I said this when we were first starting to kind of look at the schedule. This Fresno State team and ASU, very close in terms of talent, I would say. And I said this, and you kind of laughed at me, Jesse, that this is the most important game of the season. No. <laughs> it is. No. At Listen, least right now. No, because where do you see another win this season? Again, I think they're going to win like four or five games. But what about the Oregon upset? But if they can't beat Fresno State, every other opponent that they play this year is seemingly better than Fresno State. SC, yeah, but Colorado, they can... Oregon, Washington, UCLA, Utah, like – to Jeremy's point, other than Cal, it doesn't really end anytime soon. But you can get better as the season goes along. I would, you I would hope Fresno so. State. Right? I, I would hope so. But I think this is a very, very, very important game. It's going to be a big test, and it's probably already been a busy week for uh, Saga Tuitele, the uh, offensive line coach for ASU, who was with Fresno State last year. That's first and foremost why he's been super busy, helping out the coaches like scout game plan or whatever mm -hmm. but also for saga he lost both of his outside linemen for this upcoming game right so Bowley is done for the year with a broken leg you don't have any more you had no isaiah glass going into last week will he be ready to go i'm not sure but you also have no ben coleman going into this week so you're already spread thin on the offensive line and what have we emphasized since day one of us talking about this asu team the offensive line the offensive line the offensive line they're going to be faced with a massive task again. And if they can keep Rashada upright, then it'll be a massive, massive win. Let's go around uh, ASU real quick, guys. We're going to pick the game? Uh, well, I always do that at the end, but I guess if you well, want I to... No, yeah. never mind. You know, I always forget that. I never <laughs> remember that, this, this, Jeremy. We need to give credit to what else is going on in ASU. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, ASU soccer, they're four, one, and three. They took the first their first loss of the season to Texas Tech on Sunday. Mm. Uh, Colorado College is in Tempe on Friday at 7 p.m. Make sure to go and check that one out at the Sun Devil Soccer Complex. It's a fun watch as long as there's no lightning delay or anything like that. Uh, that happens all the time at that <laughs> event. Volleyball is nine and zero. Oh. Yeah, how about that? Um, yeah, volleyball is nine and zero oh to start the uh, JJ Van Neal. Era coming over from USC, where uh, coach was an assistant over there. Um, I think I will be out there on the 21st next week. Uh, so check out the um, state of the Sun Devils Twitter account or X account yes. at AZ Sports Devils for coverage of that. It's against U of A. So I thought first home game of the season. I don't know why their their first home game is like 10 games into the season. Um, but I will be out there. I will be watching it. I'm very intrigued to see where this program can go because I've always felt like it's a bit of a forgotten program at ASU. Now, for my sake, just because I genuinely don't know, do they still play the games at Desert Financial Arena or have they moved into Mullet? I think it's... I think there's Mixed. some games that both. They played okay. their first match at Mullet recently. They play, yeah. The the maroon and gold scrimmage was at Mullet. I mean, they should be utilizing Mullet if they have the opportunity. It's a nice, it's a nice Beautiful. arena. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a little bit weird for volleyball though. It's yeah. cold. It's cold and it and <laughs> the fans and the ice. The <laughs> yeah, the fans and the ends imagine of the you, imagine ice volleyball guys. <laughs> Slipping and sliding all over the place. The, the fans <laughs> behind, so stupid. behind the, the nets are way far away from the court. So they, oh, they yeah, put yeah. like court side seats right behind uh, the nice. court. And then there's like a gap and then there's more fans. So it's a bit mm. of a weird setup for volleyball because it's built for hockey. Got it. Fair enough. Thanks for that. Um, Memphis today for uh, uh, ASU volleyball. That will probably be done before this is posted. So if you're hearing this now, hopefully the 10 match is probably done. Hopefully yeah. 10 and 0. Um, triathlon beat U of A on September 2nd. They'll compete against TCU on Saturday in Fort Worth. We're really good at triathlon from what I understand, Jesse. 
Weren't they like national champs year one yeah. of the program? They're very good at triathlon. Uh, they swim in Tempe Town Lake for fun. That's weird. <laughs> I'm, like hoping, that. I'm hoping for another national championship in a triathlon for ASU. And a dynasty. It's already a dynasty. <laughs> you can't be it's a already... dynasty if it's only one year old. The, the program's like six years old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. One more thing. This is a Sun Devil, but it's not a Sun Devil Athletics related. Well, it is, but it isn't. Uh, your NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Thank you. 49ers wide receiver Brandon Ayuk. Eight catches, 129 yards, and two touchdowns. And he lost Patrick Peterson. That's a personal note. Not <laughs> That's your State of the actually. Sun Devil, League Devil of the Week. Hashtag League Devil. Should we make that a thing? Uh, Mitch and I were talking about that off air, and then a league so. devil has to perform each week. Yeah, right? yeah, but it yeah. could just always be Lawrence Guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's what we were saying. Um, all right, picks. Who you got, Mitch? Oof. Um, do I stay true to my original preseason schedule? You ask that every week. Yes. You well, should. okay, because I picked <laughs> ASU to win a close one, and then Oklahoma State won. So do I pivot or do I stay true? If I stay true, I say that they win this game against Fresno State. And realistically speaking. This is the bounce back week for ASU, right? You play the premier program in Oklahoma State. You play the premier head coach in Mike Gundy. Now you have an opportunity against a good program from the Mountain West and a good head coach from the Mountain West. This is your bounce back week, but I don't think that there's going to be a ton of offense in this one again. So I'll go 24-21 ASU. There's going to be offense in this one just based off of the first two weeks of Fresno State. I'm going to stick with my preseason prediction, which I believe I did pick ASU. So I'm going to go with ASU, and they're going to win 35 to 31. Wow. And I'm going to add another little note here. Jaden Rashada is going to lead the team on a two minute drill drive down 31 28, and they're going to take Ooh. the lead with a touchdown, you know, with. 25 seconds left on the clock or something like that. you see the like script that. recently? Is that what happened? I did not see the script. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I do not believe that the NCAA landscape is scripted. What? Um, really? <laughs> then why would Jay Norvell say what he said about Coach Prime? Unbelievable. I think that was, as Mark Schlereth said, that was probably the SID trying to hype up <laughs> Colorado State. Well. And, and get fire for this game, you know? Um, I'm going to say. Colorado 80 to nothing. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. I'm going to stick with my preseason prediction as well. Fresno State wins this one in a close one, 28-25. Hater. I'm not 25? Hater. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So There's going to be a safety in there? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, you know, two point, to. They went for two point. They did two-point conversion last week. Touche, touche. Let's see. So, uh, a, 20, touchdown, a, two, the, a touchdown, a touchdown and two-point conversion. Three uh, touchdowns, a two-point convert, one two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yes, Jesse. Okay, that's, that's what that you're going to go with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You could also do two touchdowns, two-point conversion, and three three field goals, I believe, there and a go. safety. Yeah. Okay. I think that's that's how that, I hate you when we have to, to that. figure out how you get math. Points in yeah. Football. <laughs> math. Scoregami. Um, before we get out 25. of here, want to let you know that the Anderson and Healy show that's every Tuesday. Um, you can get that on the Arizona Sports app. That's with Ray Anderson and Tim Healy. Cover all ASU athletics in a weekly video podcast. Also, uh, Sparky's Den with Coach Dillingham. That's every Wednesday. That was recorded yesterday. That's at David Buster's in Tempe if you ever want to go. They record that from 7 to 8 p.m. That's on Arizona Sports 98.7, the local sports leader. It's uh, also on Fridays, Activate the Valley, guys. That's yeah. uh, on uh, – Early in the morning, 7 a.m. With Bickley and Murata. With Bickley and Murata. Uh, Coach Dillingham joins them for a weekly segment, 15 <laughs> minutes on 98.7. So check out that tomorrow. And then, of course, on Saturday, the Sun Devils take on Fresno State. 5 p.m. Uh, pregame show, 7.30 p.m. kickoff. That's on ESPN 620 and also ArizonaSports.com and the Arizona Sports app. That's going to do it for this edition of State of the Sun Devils. Check us out on YouTube. You can check out Arizona Sports on YouTube. All of our podcasts are on there. Or wherever you get your podcasts, just download us there. And if you want to follow everything that happens at the games, we're always live tweeting, sending out videos, pictures, you name it. Follow us on X at AZ Sports Devils. For Jesse Morrison and Mitch Reldis, 
to my good friends. I'm Jeremy Schnell. Good friends. We'll talk to you on Saturday. 25.